Hi guys, I welcome you all to day 19 of anthropology lecture series. So, on day 18, we have already completed part 1 of uh, 1 1.8 that was relative and absolute dating methods. So, today we are going to start with the second part of 1.8 that is cultural evolution, very important topic. So, please stay tuned and let us get started. So, as you know, the uh, you know in 1.6 we had seen how anatomical changes happened and how biological evolution happened. One part of evolution which is very important in anthropology is cultural evolution like the kind of importance that is given to biological evolution that much importance even cultural evolution has and you will see in this chapter how. So, before starting we should know what is prehistory. There are three terms guys if you know one is prehistory, one is proto history and one is history. History as you know that it is something which has happened in the past, but you know there are classifications. History is only that part of which written records have been found, written records which have been found and they can be deciphered. So, for example, if we have like IVC right Indus Vedic civilization we have found the script of that time, but we, we have not been able to quite decipher it that what they what they used to write and what their writing style was. So, that will come in proto history for which the script is there, but we have not been able to decipher it yet and prehistory is all the time before written history. So, period before written history is known as prehistory which is eventually more uh, the like you can say 99 percent of the human history is prehistory only. History and proto history is just the tip of the iceberg. It is like very minuscule part of uh, the history of earth we know in written records right. So, now uh, Paul Turnell coined the term that is prehistor uh, prehistoric. He he coined the term prehistoric right and when he found the one of the caves in south France fine. So, all time since beginning of the earth till there were written records some scope prehistory. History can further be divided into three age system that is mostly the stone age, bronze age and iron age depending upon the predominant tool technology that there was. For example, in stone age the tools were made of stone of course, in iron age the tools were mostly made of iron that does not mean that in these times stone tools ceased to exist, they were not uh, used at all. It just means the predominant technology which was there in that time. Okay? So, 3 age system would be stone age, bronze age and iron age and this uh, this kind of system the the stone age bronze age the whole classification of these cultural evolutions that we have done that is most appropriate to describe the european and mediterranean societies now you need to understand guys that everything that happened or major researches that took place in the in the starting they were taking place in europe mostly they took these uh, research because they were the most developed in the starting right. So, they did it. So, whatever they found in their area or whatever they, they used to do research in their area, they used to define it as their own culture. That means, they used to define it as the perspective of their own. Later, we also adopted the similar kind of classifications like when we will study about Indian cultural evolution na, because India may be bohot sare purane fossils humko mile hai, right. But when we adopt this kind of a classification, it is not like very very correct in terms of Indian, Indian uh, context because uh, many places the you know there was not like proper watertight compartments jo aap bana sakte the ki for example, this is only paleolithic, this is only mesolithic, neolithic. Sometimes Mesolithic and Neolithic might have you know uh, uh, you know they were core uh, you know they were coexistential or you can say exactly different features you will not find of Mesolithic and Neolithic. So, whatever classifications they are now they are most aptly described in the 
in the European and Mediterranean societies, because they classified as to how things happened in their society. So, that is why it is most apt in their point of view, right. So, now let us start with our uh, lower uh, Paleolithic culture and in Paleolithic culture also you know Paleolithic will be divided into three parts that is lower Paleolithic, upper uh, middle Paleolithic and upper Paleolithic. Now, if we have to, I have to tell you that this period middle Paleolithic and upper Paleolithic or the whole Paleolithic the watertight compartments that uh, origin that were present in you know like uh, European context was not present in Indian context right. So, that is what we mean, mean by this. So, you can see here the picture of some paleolithic taking a hunting and taking a big animal you know. So, let us start now we will today we will do with the we will have a brief introduction of the paleolithic period and we will finish the lower paleolithic today. I am going to go very very uh, slowly because then there will be a lot of confusion in your mind. So, you need to just remember it understand it and again I am uh, telling you if you have not read the biological evolution to aapko thoda problem hoga is chapter ko samajhne mein. So, please go back to 1.6 videos watch them and come back and watch these videos. So, now let us get started by far if we have to say na the longest part of history is paleolithic period because this period was too long like if you see it it uh, it was like 26 million years to 10000 years like which is like 26 lakh years to approximately 10000 you can see how long a period that is right so this was more you know more so in europe and new world paleolithic period mostly there and cultural diversification different regions seen of course as you know uh, people would live in different areas they will develop uh, themselves according to that particular environment right. For example, in Europe the climate would be different from that of Africa and so would be the animals and so would be the materials uh, the, re, uh, the you know like uh, uh, material found right the resources like rivers like uh, uh, the vegetation would be different. So, according to the uh, you know different uh, diversification people would adapt themselves and you know just remember this thing we are reading paleolithic as paleolithic because this is a cultural classification right this is not a biological classification this is a cultural classification which means that people mostly adapted to the environment with the help of the culture and not with the help of biology biology also eventually you know helped the man to evolve and better adapt, but both things were going together. For example, when man started to eat meat, then his dentition changed. It was not like the dentition first changed and then man started to eat meat, right. So, many a times culture would necessitate the changes in biology, right. So, you have to keep this in mind. So, further I have told you Paleolithic will be divided into lower, middle and upper. So, today we are going to do lower Paleolithic. So, basically if we if you remember the Australopithecus part when we had uh, started uh, you know in 1.6 we had started I had already told you as we know that this paleolithic part is very long it is like 26 to 10,000 years ago right. So, agar mujhe sirf lower paleolithic ka time batana ho na yaan se. So, I would say around 26 million to 1 lakh year ago right this this much would be the time period of lower paleolithic period right. So, in this as you can see australopithecus was also found in like 16 to 18 lakh years ago I would write like 18 to 16 lakh years ago and after that the homo erectus came on the scene. So, somewhere down the line both I could I could say australopithecus as well as homo erectus somewhere were present around the same time in lower not same time as in uh, the same time in terms of lower paleolithic that both around lower paleolithic they were both found at some point of time in lower paleolithic right. So, we are going to start with three parts the, the oldest in lower paleolithic would be the old one culture old one is as you can see old George is this place 
so africa you can say this culture started from africa as i had already told you africa is called the cradle of civilization because somewhere the cultural or uh, human history starts from africa so of course it has to start from africa so early hominid started shaping their environment through learned behavior so initially man or whatever australopithecus or any homo you know started to shape the environment through their learned behavior that is through their culture this time in old one culture when we read it was more or less restricted to africa with with little bit of you know spreading here and there little bit here and there but mostly you will find them in the african region right right so the tools that were used in this time was the stone sharpeners for example yeah you can just imagine this to be a tool this was a tool okay and now if i have to tell you okay just wait okay when we were uh, talking about this period old one period i have told you that uh, here australopithecus were found right australopithecus were found and australopithecus was themselves you know divided into two categories that was the gracile and the robust ones robust ones were the vegetarian types and gracile were the omnivores so it is highly unlikely that the these you know like stone tools were developed by these robust ones because they were vegetarian they were eating plants and they were eating fruits so you don't need to like uh, use such tools to break plants and animal uh, sorry plants and fruits right so it is assumed that the these tools must be used by the gracile first right if anybody would have used it in the beginning it would be the gracile ones so you understand now so technology was abi water bond tools that means uh, you know as such they were not making tools whatever they were finding in the environment they were using that theek hai and sometimes they were given sharp edge by cutting off a few flakes from the stone hammer now don't worry i will teach every bit of it so please understand it sometimes from anvil this which is called percussion flaking now don't worry i'll just tell you what it is see sometimes they were using tools that were found in the environment like this they were not doing anything for it but sometimes they were trying to make it more sharpened right so how will they make it more sharp i'll tell you i'll tell you so this is a stone or which you you call a hammer stone hammer you will call it a stone hammer what they will do is they will strike off one of the edge of this tool with the with this stone hammer to make it more sharpened for example i have this this okay i'll put pressure from here try to break it right so it will become something like this right so now it is become more sharp tool na it's not uh, like a more crude tool so this and and the left part would be this part which is broken off will come out as a flake right so as of now these flakes were not used as tools only the big part that is the tool the only the whole stone would be used as tool so percussion flaking is just that when you strike off some part of the tool uh, stone to make it more sharpened so this was the technology that he, th that they used to use that is stone hammer technique stone hammer technique or anvil technique anvil is another kind of uh, you know stone only you know so this was the old one uh you know culture okay so now tools ab now if gracile would have first used these tools so they must have used it for cutting chopping because they were non vegetarians that means they consumed meat right so they they had they must have used it for cutting and chopping and the material they uh, material of tools were mostly quartzite because stones and all 
ये कॉर्डजाइट के यू नो दे वर फाउंड ऑफ कॉर्डजाइट मटीरियल सो दे वर यूजिंग दैट देन द क्लाइमेट वो सवाना टाइप सवाना इज़ लाइक अ ग्रास लैंड काइंड ऑफ ग्रास लैंड काइंड ऑफ इन्वायरमेंट विच इज मोस्टली फाउंड इन एफ्रीका इट सेल्फ सो सवाना इको सिस्टम देन दे मस्ट हैव लिवड नियर वाटर कोर्सेज और केव्स ऑब्वियसली वाटर बिकॉज वाटर इज़ वेरी इसेंशियल फॉर लाइफ इफ यू हैव टू सस्टेन लाइफ यू नीड वाटर सो दे मस्ट हैव लिवड अराउंड एंड देर दे विल ऑल्सो फाइंड द वाटर बॉर्न पेबल्स ऑल्सो विच वर देयर प्रोडोमिनेंट टूल्स दैट टाइम सो एवरी काइंड ऑफ एंड एंड देन दे यू विल फाइंड सम फिशेज और सम काइंड ऑफ यू नो फूड ऑल्सो सो दे विल लिव एट अ प्लेस विच विल प्रोवाइड दैम सिक्योरिटी इन एवरी काइंड राइट सो आई डोंट थिंक दिस वुड बी मच डिफिकल्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड नाउ फूड अर्लियर दे वर ईटिंग वेजिटेरियन बट इवेंचुअली दे ग्रेजुअली अडेप्टेड टू मीट ईटिंग ऑल्सो दे लैक्ड कनाइंस नाउ दिस इज वेयर द कल्चर कम्स इन दे डिड नॉट हैव हैव कनाइंस बिकॉज मीट ईटर्स यूजली हैव वेरी प्रोजेक्टेड कनाइंस बट दे डिड नॉट हैव दैट काइंड ऑफ कनाइंस सो दे डिड इट विद द हेल्प ऑफ द स्टोन टूल्स सो दी स्टोन टूल्स हेल्प दैम टू यू नो लाइक प्राई अ पार्ट द कार केसेज एंड देन यू नो लाइक ईट मीट राइट एंड इवेंचुअली दैट चेंज इन डेंटेशन हैपन्ड राइट सो दे एट बोथ लार्ज लाइक हिप्पो काइंड ऑफ एनिमल्स एंड स्मॉल गेम ऑल्सो लाइक लिजर्ड टर्टल फिश यू नो इट इज़ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग दैट मैन हैज यू नो एक्सप्लोर्ड एवरी काइंड ऑफ फूड फ्रॉम ईटिंग स्नैक्स टू टर्टल टू लिजर्ड्स एंड इवन टूडे यू विल फाइंड सो मेनी डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ क्यूजीन्स एट डिफरेंट प्लेसिस सो मैन हैज इवेंचुअली यू नो लाइक ईटन वेनमस थिंग्स ऑल्सो which are poisonous also so today man has a aversion of eating venomous things because they know it sometimes sometimes it is just programmed in your mind because you know when you see some striking colored fruits you tend to you know not have it because you know it that's poisonous even the tribals and the most primitive people know it how that has happened because that was you know that has ingrained in our instinct somewhere because our primitive man must have you know experimented with it okay so these are some things so let's not get diverged from our uh, topic so let's get back to it so man has eaten every kind of food large big small game theek hai and may have eaten from carcasses killed by others that means it is not uh, always that uh, they were hunting australopithecus as you know they were very primitive kind of species right so it is not like they were hunting all the time even the other carnivores that they were carnivores the other carnivores they used to hunt also na for food so they must be waiting for this carnivores to finish eating and then they would attack the same hunted animal and eat whatever is left over of it so this was the way they were getting the food so just remember abhi tak to australopithecus ka hi jaisa maine aapko wahan padhaya tha na similar abhi yahan pe ho raha hai society pe main aapko end mein le aaungi don't worry so old one culture is one part of lower paleolithic you can see a variety of tools here that they must have been using in the whole lower paleolithic it's not only the old one period but the whole paleolithic okay so two more we are going to do one is aculean tradition and one is chopper tool tra- tradition these are the three uh, you know you can say broad cultures that were there in lower paleolithic right so now aculean tradition ye thoda zyada recent tha theek hai ye kuch 12 lakh saal pehle ki baat hai 12 lakh years ago like 12 million lakh uh, million years ago ki baat aagi theek hai olduvai gorge same place africa middle east india and europe so now it's a lot more you know you can see abhi migration has happened right people uh, you know the species have moved around so you can see from here somewhere around this time homo erectus has also you know must have come on the scene so you you know how aggressively homo erectus migrated to the world right we have read this in homo erectus wala part so from here we can see somewhere homo erectus must have come on the scene and we know we already know that they migrated so now 
the culture spread to Middle East, India, Europe, etc. Right? The technology was mostly similar, nothing very different. But one characteristic feature it had was the hand axis. Right? It had hand axis with two sharpened edge. Now I'll tell you. Uh, so basically, the other culture were having chopping tools like this. If I make this a chopper and this would be a chopping tool. The difference is that chopper is unifacial that is only you know from one side it is sharpened but uh, chopping tool is bifacial that is it is sharpened from two edges right. So now hand axis came. Abhi tak wo kuch unifacial ye hand axis use kar rahe, uh, sorry they were using these chopper chopping tools but now they started to use hand axis and hand axe looks something like this right that is this is bifacial when i make this part now that means this is sharpened edge okay or something like this these are two sharpened edges okay so this is aculean hand axe classic aculean hand axe okay this is abivillian hand axe so these are different kind of hand axes that were used and cleavers cleaver is something like this you can draw cleavers like that so these are cleavers okay so they were the predominant tool technology right so this uh, uh, cleaver was used for chopping prying apart carcasses like that and they were used for skinning butchering and digging as i already told you so we did not have the canines and all so for taking out the skin for butchering the animal they were using these kind of tools right so now we had read in the old one that only quartzai tools were there that means only stone tools were there right but here use, use of bone stick wood for hammer was also started right so you can see now they have clearly uh, you know increased the material that they were using right they were using bone stick woods and increasing sophistication of flakes now I already told you in the old one when they were making the tools, flakes were just a byproduct of it. They were not used as a tool itself. But now they had started to make tools in a way, or they must have been, uh, you know, flaking the tools in a way that flakes were itself used as a uh, tool. For example, let me tell you in the old one, for example, this is a stone, they put pressure here and break the tool into this okay so right this was the leftover flake which was not used as a tool but now when they put pressure on the tool they will break it in a way that a specific size of flake comes out for example this much which they will itself use as a tool so they will put pressure in a you know a controlled manner controlled force will be used they want a certain kind of flake to come out of it that means they had bettered the technology right and soft hammer technique is just that uh, in in hammer technique we had seen that they were using stone right in soft hammer it is just when you use bone stick wood as a hammer that becomes soft hammer for example let me take you back to the this picture this is stone hammer technique this is stone hammer when you are using a stone hammer to break this tool but when you will use bone or wood anything else th but stone that will become a soft hammer technique okay guys so i'm trying to teach everything in very detail so please agar aapko kuch samajhna hai please do put it in the comment section below then the eco niche we had already seen maha pe savanna grasslands the yaha pe bhi grassland environment hi hai thik hai uh, warm temperate because temperate because now they had moved to europe parts of asia so that comes in the temperate belt right but towards the uh, the end of risk glaci uh, glaciation they had moved into colder regions now you must understand whatever this uh, time is this is overlapping with glacial and inter glacial 
with pluvial and interpluvial cycles now i will maine ye problem aapke sir pe dali hai to i will only make you understand ki ye kya hai basically do not worry see i have already told you paleolithic ya any this uh, classification we are doing this is purely culture based this is not climatic this is not geographical सो so, इस टाइम पे क्लाइमेट कैसा था वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड बिकॉज उसका बहुत ज़्यादा रोल uh, रहेगा इन द कल्चर राइट सो इस टाइम पे देर वॉज ग्लेशियल इंटर ग्लेशियल प्लूवियल इंटर प्लूवियल साइकिल्स ग्लेशियल मीन्स आइस एज इंटर ग्लेशियल मीन्स वेन देर इज रिट्रीट ऑफ आइस एज प्लूवियल मीन्स वेर देर इज मोर रेनफॉल एंड इंटर प्लूवियल मीन्स वेन देर इज रिट्रीट ऑफ रेनफॉल so this kind of a in obviously in northern part there were more like ice age but african regions may it will be more pluvial na because equator ke paas to kahan hi baraf padegi so you need to get that in, into your head also wahan pe to barish hoti thi zyada so in that way glacial interglacial pluvial interpluvial cycles chalte the right so glacial ke baad जैसे अभी इधर मैंने इधर लिखा हुआ है एंड ऑफ रिस्क ग्लेशियशन दैट मीन्स आइस एज वन ऑफ द आइस एज लाइक आइस एज इज भी फोर फाइव टाइप की थी फोर टाइप की थी इफ आई एम नॉट रॉन्ग लाइक रिस थी देन देन वॉज मेंडल देन देर वॉज वर्म सो ऐसे ऐसे अलग अलग आइस एज थी तो वन ऑफ द आइस एज हैड एंडेड एंड दे हैड मूवड इन टू मोर कोल्डर रीजन्स ओके सो नाउ दिस इज नॉट समथिंग यू हैव टू memorize and you know this is just for your understanding because i want you to understand each and everything you can just skip this part if you do not understand do not take load of it theek hai bas itna understand kar lo this was the time homo erectus come on the scene they had moved to like further northwards to europe to parts of asia uh, like asia may be different places india bhi theek hai so different different places and they had moved into colder region where the climate was warm and temperate fine they used fire shelter and adaptation to cold obviously fire they had invented we had already seen australopithecus ne bhi kya pata fire use kiyo but conclusively homo erectus ne controlled way mein fire ko use kiya tha we had seen right so they had started to use fire perhaps to cook food or to give themselves warmth or to frighten the animals and definitely shelter was an adaptation to cold because earlier they used to live outside without any uh, shelter but as they moved into colder environments they needed to shelter themselves from that cold so they started to live in caves and that is how living in caves also started right so this was the aculean tradition this is oh i had just put the picture of soft hammer technique sorry guys so this is now you are breaking the stone with the bone so this is a soft hammer fine and this is the region of aculean this is all aculean uh, traditions geographical expense so we had seen clearly in the first part only africa was there but now parts of you know middle east you know whole part of india some part of europe some part of even like indonesia uh, and all even china some part you know they were peop they were migrating you know so last is the chopper tool culture so now this was roughly the same period as aculean that is around 12 lakh years ago they it must have started and they were further mo moving to north and east of aculean sites in asia india that means sorry they must have moving to further north that is russia further east that is australia somewhere like that okay so they must have been moving to further north and east okay so they lagged hand hand axes obviously it's a chopper tool culture that means predominantly they must be using the chopper tools this is chopper and this is a chopping tool okay so they must have been using the chopper chopping tools right so hand axes they were not using or they lagged hand axes fine food uh, more or less the same kuch aisa different nahi hone wala idhar despite crude tools managed to hunt large varieties like bison buffalo elephants right and they also occasionally did cannibalism so now guys please keep one thing in mind whenever i am talking about cannibalism that does not mean it is only 
uh, chopper tool culture which is which is having uh, cannibalism it's the whole lower paleolithic culture itself right we have just to remember some points for each and every but it's not like you cannot put like lagged hand axes is a characteristic of this but agar main kuch society ke bare mein baat karungi ya religion ke bare mein baat karungi that will more or less be the same for each culture in lower paleolithic right aur agar hum koi aur padhenge upper paleolithic to sare upper paleolithic sites mein more or less similar culture hi hoga similar society hogi similar religion hoga you you should understand which are the generic points and which are more like specific point like this is a specific point this is a specific point right but this is a very general point right so you need to understand this कैनिबलिज्म होता है ओकेजनली ईटिंग द मीट ऑफ योर ओन स्पीशी दैट इज अगर ह्यूमन ह्यूमन का मीट खाएंगे दैट इज कैनिबलिज्म देन इकोनिश वज नॉर्दर्न एज ऑफ यूरो एशियाटिक माउंटेन्स दैट ये मतलब ये थोड़ा रशिया वगैरह मतलब एंड मोर वुडेड एंड कोल्डर रीजन्स में ये चले गए थे राइट सो दिस वॉज द थ्री पार्ट्स दैट वी एड रेड फर्स्ट इज द ओल्ड वन सेकेंड इज द second is aculian and third is the chopper tool culture so now if i have to summarize i will tell you the society that was there at that time which was they used to live in small bands and that means people like 5 or 10 maybe a family together would move because they were constantly on a move they were hunters they were gatherers so they could not live a sedentary life they had to move right so they of of course if they have to move that means they could not have so many belongings because they had to be you know more mobile so if they had so many uh, belongings so they would it would make it difficult for them to move so that means not many assets they had with them they did not possess any belongings right then they used to cooperate with each other because if you need to hunt a big animal you need to strategize you need to make plans so that required cooperative behavior cooperative behavior was also seen in the division of labor for example females used to you know uh, collect eggs shellfish take care of the young children and while males used to hunt big animals you know get food you know secure their uh, band so this was how the division of labor took place this division of labor also made sure that there are permanent pair bonds because if you know like a female and a male that is a permanent pair bond that means some kind of a marriage kind of institution must have also evolved because if every male in a group was you know fighting for females then that would have you know uh, that would have been counterproductive for the group's unity so it was very important that one male was married to uh, one female and took care of the child that was born by this female so that there is harmony between the groups right so there was pair bonds there was systematic hunting that means they strategized they knew which path the animal would come they knew what kind of habits they uh, those animals had which also led to further biological uh, evolution uh, you know biological evolution of human that means uh, better hand eye coordination better uh, you know strat uh, better brains became more complex parietal lobe developed you know cerebellum expanded so all of this cultural evolution though they adapted through cultural evolution but this cultural evolution led to biological evolution and you know man got more specialized and an intelligent species which further led to evolution of the species like homo came then homo erectus came then homo sapiens came so all of that they were migrating so that means they were better you know uh, adapted to different environment so physical adaptation was also there so you can conclude by saying all this ki culture mein maine aapko bata diya all of that society kaisi thi so there was some kind of you know uh, belief all belief system we have also seen that in by the time homo erectus came kuch burial types aa gaye the that they were burying uh, the you know dead in some way or you know putting some kind of flowers there or something like that so this all you have to basically integrate chapter 1.6 and 1.8
right so th with this we have finished our lower paleolithic tomorrow we'll start with the middle paleolithic right so please guys like share and subscribe any doubts you can pin down in the comment section below thank you so much